Okay. Here we are at the beginning of Painter Hill Road. I think we're in Woodbury right here. And I'm going to take us over to Marbledale. Basically through the woods. So we were sitting on Route 47, uh, just below what was Tapawingo Ski Area, or Woodbury Ski and Racket. And then we turned on to Painter Hill Road, which is uh, one of my favorite places in the world. When I was a little boy, my, my father was an abstract expressionist, and my mom was a Bostonian type. And they made friends with this nice uh, family who were up the ro road here. Uh, uh, Sandy Calder, Alexander Calder, was a sculptor. And his wife, Louisa Calder, uh, like my mom, was from uh, Boston. And they just had so much fun together. So whenever I get on this road, I'm always thinking about, uh, oh boy, I'm going to a very nice, playful house with some very, very joyful people. Uh, I'm one of the luckiest people in the world to get to have grown up around uh, so many interesting, interesting type of people. But isn't this just amazing, this piece of road? Uh, my next door neighbor in Woodville took care of the man that lived in the house here on the right. And when he died, he gave it. <laughs> he gave it to them. I couldn't believe it. Uh, the road that went off to the left there was Arthur Miller's house. I mean, not, not to go too deep into it. And uh, his daughter, Becky, married Daniel Day-Lewis, who I hear is an amazing motorcyclist. I, I would love to ride with him. So we're coming up on, I can't remember if it was Farmer Jones. It was a simple name. I've lost his name now. But the Calders were great friends with the farmer that lived in that house. And we're coming up over this ridge. We're going to be sort of seeing the the uh, Calders. Well, there's in between these two barns is a nice little dirt road that goes back. But this valley here is where Sandy Calder lived. And there's uh, his art studio is the glass structure in the front. And then towards the back there is uh, a garage and then the house. Um, but what a beautiful valley this is. Look at that. I I just get thrills whenever I see this piece of land because we had so much fun. Um, they used to have uh, a Christmas Eve party there, and everybody would come and dance. I think Sandy in the in the mid fifties went to um, some place like Brazil and came back with all these samba records. And everybody just danced the samba until two o'clock in the morning. It was <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It meant Santa Claus sort of brought things, you know, a, a little bit uh, precariously, but uh, we had a lot of fun anyway. So this house uh, burnt in something like 1940 something, 19 late 30s, early 40s, and the Calders instead of paint, you know, scraping it down, they just painted it black. <laughs> so that's why there's the, a black colonial in Roxbury. So this piece of road, uh, this is Painter Hill, and uh, we're on we're in Roxbury now, just below the Calders. It turns into Roxbury. So uh, this is coming up on the, uh, you know, the what would it be the east side of Painter Hill Road, and then we're going to call. Uh, cross Painter Ridge Road and then go down the other side of it uh, down to the Hurlberts. But look at this curve. I mean, even when I was a kid uh, coming over here on a bicycle, it, it just it just is amazing roads here. Uh, there was a moment where Arthur Miller was being chased when he married Marilyn Monroe. They were being chased by uh, you know cameramen and there was a pretty bad accident that happened. Uh, and I don't know exactly where it was, but it was in between the Calders. And, and if you go off to the left here, uh, 
Arthur used to live down on gold mine. So this is Painter Ridge we've just crossed and we're back on Painter Hill going down towards Roxbury proper. And I, on the whole, never went this way very much. We always would go back on the Painter Ridge and that would take you and point you straight at Bell Hill so right away you'd be at the Talbots where we were, where we uh, did the ride the other day on Sabaday Lane. So today what we're doing is we're going to go down into Roxbury proper and then uh, find our way back through the woods to Marbledale. So this is another batch of incredibly cool windy roads here. Uh, the Slavens lived off here uh, somewhere. But at any rate, uh, an another architect, nice, nice family. And uh, somewhere out here, it's going to open up into the most in incredible expanse of view off towards, uh, uh, well, what would it be, to Brookfield even. It's, you know, very, very open. So, uh, but for motorcycling, you can't have much more fun than what this road is doing. It just, I'm very excited. I, I ended up putting a, a pair of socks over the microphone on this thing. Here we are opening up. So this is going to be, I usually park up by this tree somehow. You know, in the fall, I'll stop here and take pictures of the, uh, you know, all the color. That that old tree in front of us does some pretty spectacular colors. So I'm still getting used to how to do this with having this camera stuck on my chest. But, you know, I got to about there and went, no, nah, I can't really. I better get off the bike and just swing around. But isn't that amazing how that goes off like that? I love the way the cornfields are cut back in there. And then, you know, again, that's a row of color in the fall. Isn't that amazing, all those barns? There is, uh, you know, again, one amazing house after another here. Roxbury, I'm trying to think who came first, but... Uh, the Calders came pretty early on, and Arthur Miller came, and then I don't know where William Styron was, but he came. I think he came because of Arthur, but I don't know. And then, uh, let's see, Dustin Hoffman came because of the Millers being there. Um, but it's, uh, it's kind of Beverly Hills-ish uh, down here. Look at this stuff off on the right. There is a greenhouse off of that, one of those beautiful English greenhouses stuck on the side of that building that uh, is bigger than our house. It's so beautiful. So again, joyful ride after joyful ride here. You just can't go wrong in Roxbury. It's, it's another one of these places where it's just pretty every direction you go. So again, one of the old families for the town were the Herberts, and they uh, had the farm at the bottom of this road, and the daughter of that family married one of the Brunsons, so uh, they've uh, been running that farm for uh, most of uh, my adult lifetime. And, uh, oh, who else? Well, uh, somebody I played music with forever, his family house is just off to the right down here, too. So, really really fun all of these families are just so joyful to know and it couldn't be nicer you know uh, living living where you were born is just it's pretty cool so there's uh, that's uh, the vegetable stand and the old Herbert house up on the hill and my friends off on the right uh, let's see, so we're going to be, oh, just behind us up the hill is where Dustin Hoffman's house is. I, I am sounding like a bus to the stars, but you can't help it with Roxbury. It's just, sorry, it's just the way it is. 
and we're coming into Roxbury proper after seeing that church. I know we're coming. There's a road coming in from Southbury. Heritage Village is down that way, and I, somebody just told me lately that Heritage Village started off as uh, Bob Hope had the land around there with a farm. So, you see what I mean? <laughs> and Victor Borga, he was down that way, the, the wonderful Danish piano comedian. Um, Victor's do daughter uh, was at Rumsey Hall with me. So, there's uh, uh, the Roxbury gas station. You know, you get a sandwich there. Years and years ago, we used to have a, a fiddle contest off here on the right and it got bigger so we ended up uh, the fire department for Roxbury moved it uh, onto a park back in the woods a little bit more um, so coming up here there's a road uh, called 199 that goes off to Washington and that's another one of those very joyous roads to ride um, and James Taylor lived down there for a bit. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to stop. Uh, so this was really fun when I was a kid. We, again, this is uh, kind of the main road to go over to Bridgewater uh, we're on now. and But I'm going to pull off of this and go off through the woods. So the Roxbury kids uh, went to school in their town, and the Washington kids went to school in their town. And after eighth grade, they got together. And, you know, some of us would go off to, you know, little artsy prep school sort of things. But uh, I remember at the eighth grade dance meeting Abby Weisgard, <laughs> who was a Roxbury, wonderful, wonderful uh, person. And her parents, Leonard and Phyllis, lived just down here. They all uh, moved to Denmark, which was pretty exciting for the rest of us because it meant we could go visit. But the house that's coming up, you can see a little bit of it on the right, that house right there. I used to ride my bicycle all the way from my house in Woodville all the way down here uh, to you know, socialize with Abby and her family. And then my best friend Cheryl Gillette, her family was off there. So this road is going to go back, Century Hill is going to go back up to um, Judd's Bridge Road, and this is seriously well-kept secret beauty land. Uh, the road above here uh, just goes through the valley back to the uh, Chapag River further down below Washington, and uh, it just couldn't be any prettier. So here we're coming up on, uh, it's going to start being dirt up at the top here. And being a beautiful day, uh, there were a lot of people using this road. I just love this, this bit of land coming up. Uh, there's going to be some really, really beautiful uh, rocks, uh, hillside, off to the right here. And off to the left is an amazingly beautiful field. And there was a young uh, girl sort of uh, playing on the road. I, I was a little worried about scaring her. But uh, oh, here we have a car. There are a lot of people that come down to walk back in here. Uh, there's a big sign that says, you know, only Roxbury residents. So it wouldn't be someplace that, you know, the many headed would go. Uh, so, let's see, yeah, here are all these cars, this is because all these people are going to be, you know, walking, I guess their they're paths back off there, again, being not from Roxbury, I, I wouldn't know, but uh, let's see, this is just, um, I, lo I love the way the light is hitting in here with the color. Okay, we're coming down into these open fields, and the uh, young kid is sort of off in the trees there somewhere. Um, and she sort of pulled off into the trees, and I thought, 
Well, I do want to show this field, so, so I was a little worried I was going to scare her stopping the motorcycle like this, but she was fine. I looked over and she was hopping around. <laughs> uh, so almost straight ahead of us, there's the Chapag River. Off in between that hill and those trees, uh, the Chapag is going down there. And uh, this is just, I had to stop to show you that. Isn't that just pretty? And the woods. It's hard to see how sculptural it is, but there's a lot of rock face up of a, above there. So this is some more Shangri-La land. <laughs> So around this corner, we're going to start noticing uh, that the river is coming up next to us. The cool thing about this is we're going to go all the way from Roxbury on dirt over to uh, one, 109 uh, on what I described before as the uh, roller coaster road. Oh, we had a little dog she was being very careful about. So, isn't that great? This bit of road is uh, pretty easy. What, uh, when we get on to Wee Walker Brook, they've just been um, uh, uh, grinding it off. So it was a little, it was pretty loose. But right here, this is fantastic. And uh, so is that view. So a lot of what I've been showing you keeps coming back to the Chapag. You'll notice how much bigger the Chapag River is here. It's, you know, it, it's joined with the Bantam and gone down further than Washington. So there are other other brooks have joined in with it, and it's it's getting pretty pretty much. It's a lot bigger than what it is in Woodville, at, at any rate. Woodville is where I grew up. That's when I talk about that bridge that got taken out. Well, speaking of bridges, we are at Judd's Bridge. And this is about as beautiful a spot for Litchfield County as you can find. Again, with this camera, I'm sort of going, how do I make sure people see all this? Isn't that great? bent at the waist to see well maybe I could get it to go down a little bit and there were some little donkeys off here too and the other side going down river So for all you guys that haven't been able to get out, I just, it just, when there is land this beautiful to look at, I just had had to share it. And it gives me a great excuse to go out social distancing, you know, in kind of a arty way, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of fun. Uh, so Judd's Bridge Farm is this whole valley coming up here. And... <laughs> It's, it's exquisite. So like I say, I, I have this uh, soft spot for, you know, amazing farms hidden in a valley where nobody knows that it's there. And Judd's Bridge is uh, pretty, it, it it's, hits all those, all those check marks. Can you imagine having a barn that looks like an old salt box? I think there must be a story to that. So up, if we went straight up here, this would take us onto the top of the ridge into Milford. So we're still in Roxbury. If we go up the hill on the other side of this, we'll be um, up in New Milford. But we're going to turn north, and we're 
going to stay in Roxbury, and I think one side of the, we're going into uh, Walker Brook Road, and I think as this road goes along, there's parts of it that the left-hand side of the road would be in New Milford, and the right-hand side of the road would be in Washington. But at any rate, at this point, we're still in Roxbury. I'm guessing, but I think that's right. <laughs> There are a lot of fantastic things that happen off of this road. So um, I can't see if it's we've gotten to where it started to grade. Oh, I remember what I'm doing here. Because I know the road is going to get bad, because I came down through here before, uh, I'm turning off the traction control and uh, what's the other one called? ABS. So it just means if you start... Uh, breaking in the soft stuff that moves around a little bit. Uh, you just have, have a little bit more of a, a versatile uh, idea of stopping. You can sort of play with the back brake uh, or the front brake, you know, kind of separately, which uh, helps keep the, f the frame sort of a little bit more stable. I keep bringing up keeping the frame stable, but that's that's kind of the trick about this thing is how do you um, hold the momentum uh, and keep some kind of glued tire to the road while you're doing this swinging around from left to right the way you do. Uh, it's a fascinating sport because of that and you get to do it and look at all this beautiful stuff at the same time this is uh, so you'll be noticing that I'm gonna go back and forth between standing and sitting uh, for comfort and I'll sometimes I'll sit to change gears because it's just safer uh, without t because you have to twist your weight around a little bit to get your foot under there and uh, but for certain parts of this it's kind of safer to be standing and when it gets uh, a little squirrely sometimes I'll sit down just to make sure that I'm slowing up and um, if I was a more expert rider I would be probably standing up more uh, but you can see the surfaces oh I'm all the way over there to be out of their way there's something about standing up and trying to wave that's pretty, it's a pretty interesting thing to pull off. Uh, again, being a person that grew up in this country uh, side here, the rules when I was a kid was it didn't matter if you knew somebody or not. If you saw somebody out in the countryside, you waved at them. And so I keep to that. You know, there's certain people that look at me and like, why are you waving at me? And it's like, well, we live in the same town, so we better get to know each other and take care of each other. So that's sort of the older way of thinking. Uh, and I think it's fun for, you know, the people that are moving in to sort of, well, get friendship that kind of way. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now you can see the surface underneath me is a little, I guess I would call the road right now ragged. It's, uh, it's been, you know, scraped at. So with the light, you're sort of going, okay, is there gravel here or isn't there? Or what's coming up? And, uh, with the sort of some softer sand, uh, softer sand will pull you around a little bit. So, um, the big trick is to not slow down if it starts pulling at you. You have to not exactly gun it, but you, again, with the frame, there's this whole thing of keeping the front tire kind of lighten up. So once the front tire starts digging in, you're going to get in trouble. Uh, I mean, it wants to have traction, but... Um, if you find yourself in sand and you start slowing down, uh, the front tire can sort of uh, get turned to mud and uh, get pulled in. 
So someday, up ahead here, I'm going to take you up onto the Church Hill roads. And there's, there's a few of them going, going back. There's Upper Church Hill, Lower Church Hill. And uh, on this side, um, it starts, uh, one of them starts uh, just on the edge of Walker Brook. I think that's it going up there. And again, that couldn't be more beautiful land. But I wanted to get, uh, I knew this was going to be a long film. So I wanted to get back towards, yeah, that, that bit of dirt was not a lot of fun right there. Um, after uh, a little bit more of this, we're going to be coming out on 109. And 109 in between New Milford and, and uh, Washington is, <laughs> is the most amazing roller coaster of a road. So when I was a kid, it was called the Roller Coaster Road. My brother flipped over a Volkswagen convertible on that road. It's not hard to do. Um, but anyway, that was a long time ago. Um, let's see, up here. This just couldn't be more fun. So I remember coming from the other side when I saw that barrel. I was like, oh, they've been playing with this road. I better watch out. And I'm glad that barrel was there because it woke me up. I went this whole road down uh, all the way to Route 47 and got there and realized the camera hadn't started. So this is uh, doing the same route in two directions, which was really kind of a good idea and a lot of fun because it meant I knew, knew exactly what I was hitting. And, um, but it was yeah, it was very disheartening when I got to the end. What happened was the camera, when it started, asked me if I knew that the, the sound wasn't on. So it didn't start when I hit record. Surprise! So if we went straight across there, that's more of Wee Walker Brook. And we could have done that, but I, I really wanted to show uh, for some of the our local friends uh, the Whiteheads Hill. I'm going a little faster than I wanted to here because when I pulled out there, around the curve behind me, a, a big old Volvo came down the hill. So I sped up a little bit so I'd get away from him because I knew I wasn't going to be on this road long. Well, you see why it's called the roller coaster. It's going up and down. There's beautiful sweep to the right right there, but we're not doing it. So we got this little back road now. Uh, this is a really good trick. If I want to get all the way from Washington, uh, either New Preston or Marbledale, uh, over to Roxbury, this is almost faster uh, than going up to the green in Washington. And it's one of my favorite routes because, uh, you know, not a lot of anything has happened to any of this road. So it's some of the other roads have gotten a lot busier and I like being on the stuff that isn't so busy. So we're coming up on the four corners uh, on Whiteheads and this is really pretty land up here. I can't remember what I... Oh, I have to turn the traction control and the, uh, the other thing back on. ABS. Um, if we went off to the right here, it would take us back to, down to 109, and straight ahead would take us over to the apple farm, and you know the t the top of uh, Baldwin Hill, and then from this corner we're going to go to the right, and that'll take us down um, t again towards Marbledale. I think it's Wheaton Road down below here. This is a wonderful batch of uh, turns again. When I was a kid, we had, uh, let's see, I had my, really my two best friends uh, were both in Marbledale. And 
let's see, Chris McPherson was up on the hill above, and then Philip Signor and his wonderful sister Elizabeth Signor were at the bottom of the hill. And all three of those people were just uh, kind of my first, you know, real socializing friends, you know, say fourth and fifth grade. Really, really kind families. Um, so again, when I, well, when I was, uh, before I had my license, I did a lot of riding around on bicycles. So for me as a, you know, an elderly guy going around on all these roads on the motorcycle, it just takes me back and it takes me back and it takes me back. So I can't tell if that's it right there, but right around here somewhere is where the Wee Walker Brook Road comes in. The thing that I'm looking at, I think that's it right there, but, uh, you know, the screen that I'm looking at is a little small, so there's a lot of stuff that I'm not seeing as well as you guys are. It's really funny. When I get it done, I, you know, uh, put it on a full screen and I go, oh, there was more there than I thought there was. <laughs> so we're coming off of um, this, the hill. Um, again, I can't remember what this piece of road is called. I always call it Whitehead's Hill, but that's, you know, I know it's got a real name. But at the bottom here, we're going to be getting on to the uh, Wheaton Road. Isn't that pretty? Yep, so off to the left here was uh, Skitch Henderson, uh, the guy who did the Tonight Show. Uh, had a farm there and his wife did a wonderful job of having a cooking school and all sorts of stuff but we're coming up on some really really pretty land here uh, I'm gonna stop for a second just to look off to the left there's you get to see the valley and it's it's really 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 gorgeous so you know as kids we knew everybody in all these houses this is where I would come to go trick-or-treating when I was a kid but all of this is to get off the bike so that I can show you well that's pretty but this valley isn't that nice yeah just couldn't be prettier and right there that white house there that was where Chris and Karen McPherson lived. Not that White House. But that's, uh, boy, just couldn't be any nicer. I think a few people are sort of going, I wonder what that guy on the motorcycle is doing. And then they get a little closer and they see this camera sticking out of my chest. It's really pretty funny. I, I have a, a, a zoom camera and it's on a tripod, which, oh, there's, there's uh, Chris McPherson's house. And uh, so this video is, I'm going to end it down here at the bottom of this hill. Um, I just had to, I wanted to get the Signor's house into this. Isn't that amazing? The other side of that hill there, uh, you'd see Lake Warmog. So uh, Marbledale is below Lake Warmog on the Aspatuck. And again, I got off just because I thought it, this is just so pretty. Marbledale is called Marbledale because it's one of those places that they dug uh, marble. You can see that w there's water there, and that used to be filled with marble, I think. Uh, but a lot of the marble from here went to Washington, D.C. pretty early on. Um, so we're getting pretty close to the end of this video. Uh, all <laughs> the land coming up ahead is all of these houses I went for candy for, you know, doing a trick or treat with Chris McPherson when I was a kid. So I have very warm memories of all of this. And as I say, the Signors were at the bottom of this hill, and Philip Signor was so he was a great friend when I was a, when I was a kid. Um, as was his sister uh, Elizabeth. Uh, Beth Signor was just the most wonderful kid. I have very, very warm memories of uh, 
all three of those people. So here we are at the bottom. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see. The red barn there is part of the Signors, I think. Yes. And the house with the nice porch. That was the Signors' place. Okay. Church is off on the left. Top of the hill above us is Bill Blass. And I'm going to say my goodbyes. Thank you so much for watching this, everybody. And we'll talk to you another time. Okay. Bye.